How's it going everybody? Midwest Power Technics here this afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to talk a little bit about safety today. Something uh, we haven't really done on this channel a whole lot is talk about safety. Fourth of July is coming up. Figured, you know, it'd be a great time to give everybody some uh, reminders, tips and tricks, uh, things like that. Those of you that uh, have been around a while probably already know a lot of this stuff, but for anyone that's new, uh, stick around. Maybe a little bit longer of a video, but um, there'll be some good information I'm going to cover here and some cool topics uh, such as racks, milk crate racks, shooting out of uh, regular mortars, um, you know, fusing cakes and stuff like that. I'm gonna try to cover all those topics if I can. It may be a little bit of a longer video, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, real quick though, I encourage you guys to check out my uh, Facebook group that I've got, um, also our TikTok page. Both of the links will be in the description if you guys wanna hop over and check that stuff out. Uh, we got some cool stuff in there uh groups growing fast uh, appreciate everybody who's joined um so we'll go ahead and get right into it so let's talk about racks first a lot of people shoot out of racks and personally it's one of my favorite ways to shoot a, a, sh a pretty good sized show and it's probably one of the most efficient ways to do it and a trick that i like to use to keep my mortars secured is spraying foam in the spaces here now i just use this cheap uh, expand a foam, you know, from Walmart. This is like two, three dollars a can, um, and it works great. So, these mortars, as you can see, they're not going anywhere. I'm trying to twist them, they're secured, they're in here. I've got them screwed together with wood, not going anywhere. This should be a pretty solid rack, it's brand new, just made it. Um, and another thing I do with mine is I drill with a hole saw, I cut out holes, I try to get them evenly spaced, but it's not perfect. Uh, to keep these mortars in there and it's a pretty tight fit as well so that keeps them nice and secure for they won't go anywhere they don't jump around mortars won't fly out just things like that a lot of people don't care for reusing these uh mortar kits i've had so many of them laying around that i want to put them to good use and personally these things are really tough and they last a long time i've talked to a lot of different uh, pyros out there and this is a common trick a lot of guys use so you know whatever your opinion may be you know i personally think they're fine never had any issues with them you know they make fiberglass mortars for 1.3 so they should be plenty strong for 1.4 i mean they're 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 good mortars so i like them you know you may not like them you know leave me a comment say why you don't like them or why you might think they're dangerous um personally though i like them second thing is uh I'm going to try to talk a little bit about fusing. So that's another, people had a little question about, I'm not, personally, I'm not real good at fusing. I usually just uh, hand light everything except for finales. But when you do fuse stuff together, you really want to make sure that you've got good contact between the two fuses. I don't have a cameraman here today, but, um, so I'm just doing all this on my own. But you really want to make sure that these two are touching good and you use either good zip tie or good tape that way they don't fly apart now another trick and i'm not going to go real deep into the fusing because you guys there's a lot of other videos a lot of other people have talked about this uh cody b pyrotechnist he's done a lot of videos on fusing he does a really good job on fusing that's uh one thing i really like that that he uh, shows is the how to fuse a rack and everything like that it's time consuming and it's tedious and um, if you guys want to see how to do it properly, go check out his videos. But uh, a quick tri t tip I'm going to show you is make sure you cover these with tape or something because embers can land on this visco and light it. And then you have a huge mess, sky puke. You don't want that in your show if you're wanting a nice steady fire rate. So um, that's all I have for fusing. Uh, another thing is when you guys are lighting shells, no matter whether it's out of a single tube or out of a, a rack, make sure you don't ever lean over a mortar to ever look inside of it or to light it. I always, I stick to this propane torch to light if I'm doing a show. Sometimes I use a flare. Those work good because they provide extra light, but these work great. But never lean over it no matter you know if the if make sure the f the fuse is out and hanging over never you know sometimes they get bunched up down in there like that and you kind of have to and i've done it don't don't get me wrong i've done it and everybody probably has but try to avoid it if possible for you guys that are new 
always make sure it's leaning out and you can hit the fuse at a good arm's length as you can see that way if, it, if something happens and it skips and it goes off immediately you're not over it your body's not over the mortar you're away from it you can you know you can uh, help prevent getting hit by a shell going off um, so that's another thing to watch guys and make sure your your mortar bottoms are clear before you uh before you load them and shoot them because sometimes crap gets left behind and this is more of a problem with one with one three with these lift cups so those of you that are new to one three these are what is glued to the bottom of a shell that's got the black powder lift charge in it and when these go off they usually end up staying in the bottom of the tube now i don't have a i don't have a three inch tube to show you but um so basically these things will sit say this table's the bottom of the tube they'll sit in there just like that sometimes they get a little bit crushed or half burnt and they'll get sideways or just you know off to the side they don't sit in there perfectly but and then you know you'll get two or three in there and the problem is your shell we'll use this for an example your shell will end up getting kind of off at an angle or it's not sitting it needs to be seated that shell needs to be seated on the bottom of that mortar to create the pressures to lift it out of the tube if it's in there a, you know several inches off the ground or sitting on a, a lift cup like that it's not gonna it's not gonna um, ignite properly it's only gonna get half the distance out uh, of altitude that it needs to go off safely so always dump these out or get a uh, like a, a hook or a uh, coat hanger and pluck these out that way your mortars are clear make sure there's no embers or anything smoldering in them when you reload those of you that have to reload um, be real careful about it if you have a shell that doesn't go off i like to just kick the mortar over away from people that way you know it's dead don't ever look over it you know try to see what's going on in there always make sure you know if this if this visco a lot of times and i've seen this happen more times than not sometimes the visco gets all the way up into this paper and you see where this goes into this lift into the lift charge sometimes they glue that and i don't know what happens if it gets snuffed out but i've seen them literally go out right here and it's pretty common actually i've had this let me know if you guys have had this happen before but the the visco will go out somewhere in the paper i don't know what happens you know these are guys these are cheap chinese shells i mean let's be honest they make they they mass produce these so there's going to be there's going to be problems um so if you ever have that tip it over you know tip the mortar over don't try to stick your torch down in there and light it um so just just be careful with that you know um and let me know if you guys have ever had that happen like i said um one other thing too i really hope people don't actually throw these um don't ever throw one don't ever have someone light it and throw it if this goes off in your hand you're gonna lose fingers and you may lose most of your hand these things are wicked um i can do it i can do a demonstration of how powerful these actually are lighting them on the ground if you guys want to see that let me know um because i can kind of do a demonstration of uh what kind of damage they can do you know because they are, they're very wicked and we don't want people having more injuries and you know politicians saying that these need to be outlawed that's the last thing we want you know we want to try to be safe here if we can and that goes for ball shells as well these things are also pretty wicked and you know they're just you know you might say well it's just a ball shell but i mean it's it's explosive these guys these are explosives so treat them with respect and that's the best thing you can do is just really just be careful watch who's out there with you and watch who's out there shooting with you all right so the next thing i want to talk about is milk crate racks and this goes along with cakes as well so with your milk crate racks a lot of people aren't real crazy about these and you know they say they're they're too dangerous and they can tip over um which that is all true but if you do it right you're not going to have any issues now obviously i've got a few mortars missing out of this one that i've uh robbed for other projects but normally this will be full and these will be in here fairly tight uh, i had this one full and i shot a uh my was it my new year's show i shot um with this one 
and it was fairly tight and I actually had mortars jumping out like I, I was watching it go off and you can't see it in the video and I should have shown this after the fact but I actually had mortars that were like blown out on the ground because they were jumping and they were they, they have recoil it's like a cannon they have recoil and the bottom is plastic so it kind of produces a spring and it bounce they bounce out so like with your mortars take your foam and spray it down in all these gaps and it will help solidify the mortar rack um there's a lot of different mortars out there mortar racks out there some guys use dr11 i'm using these fiberglass ones but nonetheless they're all they all are kind of dangerous um and i really don't I recommend using these in highly populated areas. If you guys have a lot of room out in a field, then they're relatively safe. Um, and a trick to do with these, stake them down. Um, use some sort of a, like a stake or some sort. This is one of my old ones. You know, just drive, drive something like this in the ground um, next to it, a good several inches, drive it in the ground and then tape it. Whether this be a mortar rack or a cake, this works for both. Tape it to the cake or the mortar rack or the or the uh, milk crate rack. Tape it up and it won't go anywhere. If you drive the, if this is a stake and you drive it in the ground, it's gonna stay up. Or you can use something like a piece of wood, like this railroad tie. Um, you know, block it up, put a couple of them up against it, something heavy, hold it down. That works for these as well. I put feet on mine so you can put weights on these to weigh it down or stake it down, however you want to do it. Um, cause these can tip guys. I mean, if you're on unstable ground or concrete, that's real, uh, there's no give to it. These can, they can bounce around. So that's one thing that you really need to watch for is when these things bounce around. Um, uh, real quick tip. If you like to shoot um, novelty stuff, look into getting punks. These things are awesome for lighting uh, bottle rockets and Roman candles and stuff. Um, that's just another thing I wanted to bring up real quick. And I don't think they get a lot of credit, but I love punks. And they're fun to play around with when you're shooting little stuff. Um, so, and another thing for you guys that are new, we're talking about quick match. This is what they usually have on a leader for like a display shell. So... This stuff, and I'm gonna do a demonstration. I'll show you guys a demonstration here at the end, but this stuff burns at like a fraction of a second. So, you know, those of you that are new, it's not like this Visco that takes a few seconds. And it has a time delay, but once that time delay hits that paper, it's gone. So that is a really dangerous part of 1.3 is if you have a mistake with this, the shell's on its way, it's gone. I mean, it, it doesn't care what you did it's gonna go. So we're gonna show you guys a demonstration on how fast this goes so you guys know what you're getting into and know, you know, if this is your first time, say you just got your ATF license for the fourth, this is gonna be your fourth first time shooting one three. Be careful, have the right equipment, and just be safe, guys. I we really want to make sure everybody has a great fourth. Don't want to have any injuries. All my uh, viewers, all my subscribers, you know, I want to keep everybody safe nobody's perfect you know i'm sure i've done some stuff on the channel that's been questionable um i try to be as safe as i can to set a good example but then again though sometimes we lose track we're always having fun shooting stuff we lose track of what's going on best thing to do is just stay uh just stay focused on what you're doing and you know make sure everything is done in a safe manner um, but with that being said i really don't have anything else to cover for today um apologize for not having a camera man it's kind of hard to do all this stuff myself but uh um, we're on our own today but anyway that's all i have for today guys but i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'm going to show you that um that the demonstration on this at the end so um if you guys have any other questions or concerns or anything i forgot to mention um drop them below in the comments uh we'll uh we'll get that discussed um feel free to join facebook and check us out there I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video, and we'll talk to you guys next time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a quick demonstration here of this uh, quick match. And one thing I want to point out, when you guys are uh, shooting, make sure you wear closed-toed shoes and um, preferably jeans when you're lighting a show. Um, and also, remember to wear safety glasses. That's one thing I just forgot to uh, point out. Um, so always, you know, that way if you have to run or you have embers come down at your feet, you don't want to be in flip-flops where it can burn you and get your legs. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. All right, so 
basically you've got your black match lead that goes into the paper so when it hits this paper it burns super fast um, and you won't even really be able to see it happen um, and maybe I can do a, I'll do a slow-mo version of this as well but uh, right now I'm going to show you guys the regular demonstration of how this works so I'm going to hit this with my torch and just watch it this is kind of like a um, your your time delay and then it's going to be gone so if you accidentally hit this with your torch it's going to go off in your face so here we go that was pretty loud too that was about like a firecracker so as you can see that was very fast now i'm going to show you guys a slow-mo of that and also it leaves behind embers and glowing stuff so that can light other shells so you guys got to make sure that you're covering everything that can be uh, detonate you know anything your shells laying around if you're hand lighting and reloading keep them covered we used to do it uh, we used to keep them in trash cans and put the lids on them to keep them um, from from fallout and embers getting in there because if that happens you're going to blow everything up and that's that'd be very bad if you had five inch shells going off so um, just remember what that does all right so i'll show you the slow-mo in just a second 